So this is another short chapter. Um, we're going to be looking at exponential and logarithmic functions, mainly because exponential functions can be used to model so many things in real life and in business. And um, logarithmic functions are their inverses, so that's how you undo them. But logarithmic functions on their own also um, are used to model things like um, sound decibels and um, earthquakes. So there is a lot in this um, unit that is uh, real life applicable. So we're going to start with exponential functions and just kind of review them. An exponential function is when you have x in the exponent. So your variables in the exponent. And we are looking really at when a is bigger than zero, because it gets really weird if it's not, and a can't be one. Because if you had one to the power of anything, it's still one. So our first example, let's look at y equals two to the x. Okay, so let's let's make a table. We're gonna have x and y equals 2 to the x. Now some of these you know pretty easily, or you should. Um, 2 to the first power is 2. 2 squared is 4. 2 cubed is 8. It'd be 16 and 32. So you're multiplying by 2 each time. 2 to the 0 is 1. So notice the pattern. You're multiplying by 2 going down the table. So inversely, you would be dividing by 2 to go backwards. That kind of proves that 2 to the negative 1 is 1 half. 2 to the negative 2 is 1 fourth. 2 to the negative 3 is 1 eighth, and so forth. Now, as I keep going with more and more negative numbers, it's going to be 1 over bigger and bigger numbers. But it's never going to really reach 0. So let's, let's plot that. Um, 2 to the 0 was 1, 2, 4, 8, the next one would be 16, so it gets big really, really fast. But it gets small really, really slow, but it's never going to actually reach zero. That's called a horizontal asymptote at zero, so it never reaches zero. So let's make a note, never reaches zero, or Y never reaches zero. Now what's happening here is it's getting bigger really fast. This is called exponential growth. So, and we can have a number in front of it. Um, if I multiply by a number, that would just um, shift everything just a little bit. That's exponential growth. And that only happens when A is bigger than 1 and c is greater than zero. We get exponential growth. You always have a domain of all real numbers. The range is always going to be the y's have to be bigger than zero. And we have an asymptote at the x-axis. It can't pass that. Now let's look at an example. $10,000 is invested at 6% compounded monthly, then the future value of the investment S after X years is given by this equation. And we'll look um, another time on how that equation is found, but right now all we're actually doing is, is calculating. So find the future value after five years. So A, we're going to be doing S of so we're going to replace the x with 5. So we have 10,000, parentheses 1.005, to the 12 times 5. And we 
make it. 13,488, and remember this is money, so we're gonna go two decimal places, and 50 cents. Don't short somebody their 50 cents, they'll get mad. Now let's see how big that account would be after 30 years. So I could retype the whole thing, and just replace the five with 30, or if you up arrow into the history, I can copy and paste it and type in 30. Woo! So if you leave it in there 30 years, it gets really, really, really big. And that's because we have exponential growth. All right, now let's see what happens if we have two to the negative x. Which would also be like having it be the same as one half to the x. So, 2, if I plug in 0, I'm still going to have 2 to the 0, which is 1. If I plug in 1, I get 2 to the negative 1, which is 1 half. 2 to the negative 2 was 1 fourth. 2 to the negative 3 is 1 eighth. If I plug in negative 1, negative negative 1 becomes 2 to the first power. This would be 2 squared, and this would be 2 cubed. So notice we've got an alternating pattern here. It's going the opposite way. So when x is negative 3, it's at 8, then 4, then 2, 1, 1 half, 1 fourth, 1 eighth. So this time, it's going down. Still, it never reaches zero. So, if you have that number bigger than one to a negative exponent, you're going to have um, this should be saying exponential decay. I will try to fix it on your notes. This is not growth. This is decay. It's also true if the base is between 0 and 1. You get decay. Same type of behavior, but it's just kind of flipped. I'll fix that in the notes. Okay, so an example of decay is medicine. Each medication has an elimination constant that corresponds to the percent of the medication the body eliminates between doses. So your body uses it up in your bloodstream and it gets smaller and smaller um, as, as the time progresses. So suppose that a certain medication taken every six hours, uh, the milligrams present in the bloodstream after a 500 milligram dose is given by this. And notice that we're starting with 500 milligrams and it's starting at 500. I want to point that out on that last example too. We were starting with 10,000 and so that's our initial value, 10,000, 10,000, starting with 500, 500. Notice this is bigger than 1 but we have a negative exponent so this is going to be decaying. So let's look at A which is how much um, medication we have after a half hour. So what are we going to be plugging in for T? Half an hour would be 0.5. And then six hours later, we're going to be plugging in six. Okay, so let's see how much medication is left. I'm going to clear this out. 500 times 1.89 to the negative 0.5. 
363 milligrams is still present in the bloodstream. Oh, I messed up. Hold on. Whoa. 500. That's 1.089 to the negative 0.5. Okay. See, it's not that much after a half hour. I knew I tapped in something wrong. 479 milligrams. After six hours to the negative six. 299.7 or 300 milligrams. So we've, after six hours, only 300 milligrams is left. So 20, 200 milligrams has been used up or eliminated through your um, body, which would be about um, 40 percent has been used up. Okay. A special function that occurs frequently in economics and biology is y equals e to the x. And e is a number. It's 2.718. It's going to behave just like any other exponential. So if I wanted to graph y equals e to the x, this one we can't really do by hand as well, so let's use the calculator to help us. So we're going to um, go into y equals. I'm going to clear out everything else. And e on the calculator is right here above ln. It says e to the x. So we're going to press second ln and get e to the x. And I'm going to use my table to help me graph. Whoa. By the way, if your table's ever really, really weird, see how it says um, we can go to table setup right here, second table setup. I want to start my table at negative 3. Now when I go back into the table, it's numbers I can deal with. So at negative 3, we're at 0.5, point, oh, 0 0.05, that's, oh, that's really tiny, then 0.13. Then it's at 0.3, and then 0 goes to 1. 1 goes to 2.7, th uh, 2 goes to 7.4 basically, so about there. And then, whoop, and then 3 is at like 20. It jumps fast. So we definitely have growth. But if the exponent is negative, for example, this one e to the negative 2x, second e to, whoops, to the negative 2x, let's look at the table. Now the negatives are really, really big. I can't even plot those. Negative 1 is at 7.3, then 0 is at 1. And then it gets small really, really fast as well. So we definitely have an extreme exponential decay. Historically, prices for goods and services rise, resulting in the erosion of the purchasing power of a dollar. With the 2012 dollar as a reference, the 2016 purchasing power of 0.921 can be interpreted as meaning that in 2016, a dollar will purchase 92.1% of the goods and services that we could purchase in 2012. This table is showing the purchasing power of a, of a 2012 dollar for the selected years later. So look at how it changes. The first thing we're going to do is um, use this data with x as the number of years after 2010 to find an exponential function that models the decay 
of the purchasing power. So if we're going after 2010, this would be a 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, and 40. So we'll be putting these in as our X and these in as our Y. So remember, to put in data when we're trying to model, we're going to press the Stat button, go to Edit, up arrow to clear your lists. Remember, you don't want to delete the list, just clear them. So you press Clear when you're on the name at the top. When I go up to L1, I hit the Clear button. And we're going to type in our X values. Whoops. Oh. Oh, quit. I hit something wrong. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 5, and 40. And then it's a dollar, 0 0.962, 0 0.921, 0 0.877, 0 0.82. So after 40 years, you could only buy like 36% of what you could buy back in 2012. Or Yeah, that's crazy. So to model this with an exponential, we're going to press Stat, Calculate. First off, oh, before I do that, before I do that, let's, let's look at the plot. Let's remember how we used to do this. So we're going to go to plot, turn it on by pressing enter on plot one, and then hitting zoom, zoom stat. And looking at it, I think, I mean, if I were looking at this, I might even think it would be a um, linear. But they're telling us that it's actually exponential. So we'll go down to calc, and let's look for where it says exponential. Oh, there it is. And we can store this in Y1. So remember, I can go here and press Alpha F4 and store it in Y1. And it gives me the A, the number that goes in front, and then B, which is going to be my base. So I end up with Y equals 1.078 times 0.973 to the x. So notice this is a number that is smaller than 1. This is actually going to be decay. Let's look at the graph. Uh-oh. I know why it's shading. If yours isn't doing that, don't worry. It was because I hadn't changed mine from um, when I was doing inequalities. And I should have. Um, so I need to go change all of them. Uh, golly. Now let's look at it. Oh, that's a lot better. Okay. What does the model predict as the purchasing power of a dollar in 2028? Well, if I hit trace immediately, I'm on the plot, the scatter plot. So I'm going to press the down arrow to move to my Y1. And I can type in any value I want um, for an X. But 2028 would be how many years after 2010? That's going to be 18 years. So I'm going to type in 18, and it says it's 0 0.66. So the purchasing power is 66 cents.
when will the purchasing power fall below 20.25? So you have two ways to do this. You could um, hit trace. Oh, oh, I'm at 25.1. Oh, I'm, I'm looking at the wrong side. Purchasing power would be my Y. So you can hit trace and maneuver down here. But it's not letting me get very far, so I'm going to look at the table now. And I'm going to scroll down to find where it hits 0.25. Looking at the Y values. Oh, there it is. After 54 years. So what year would that be? Two thousand ten. That'd be the year two thousand sixty four.